Hello and welcome by EA's art channel. My name is Ilkian Wiersma and today I'd like to talk about uh, more about this painting behind me. But before I do that I uh, like to share a little, li uh, a little bit of the story behind these, uh, these paintings. And I say these paintings because I have a uh, sort of uh, theme starting and that includes um, sort of the, the books that my husband is working on. And he is uh, writing books about uh, Celtic gods. And for example, he uh, just finished a book about uh, Sir Nunos of Ker Nunos. Uh, I always have a little bit of difficulty pronouncing uh, those names, but I think you will, uh, you know what I'm talking about. And I uh, painted, um, yeah, sort of my way, my vision on those those gods. And the first one was a Guardian of the Moon, and the second one was uh, Danu, a grizzly bear drawing that I uh, did in uh, in pastels. And the third one is this one behind me. It is a Scottish Highlander with um, some very uh, strong weather, I should say, uh, in the background. Some uh, thunderstorms in the background. And for me that was um, indicating the power of this painting. There's a lot happening there. There are little uh, houses. There is a little village here, apparently. And yeah, the cow is uh, walking away from the village because and he knew what would be happening there. And it's for me, it's sort of like if the people have uh, listened, they would know that that storm was coming and they could um, take all the precautionary matters that would be necessary to survive uh, this storm. It's just uh, a little bit out of the box thinking and uh, a little bit of fantasy, which I really like. Um, so therefore, yeah, I, I really f f uh, having a lot of fun painting these paintings. And like I said, it's my way uh, of translating the uh, the gods of, uh, which, uh, of what they uh, resemble onto the paintings. So therefore, it's my uh, my interpretation, and I just hope you like it. So that said and done, I thought it would be nice to do a little bit of an introduction, so you get a little bit better understanding uh, why I'm making these paintings. With that, that said and done, uh, let's start the tutorial and I will see you in a few minutes. And as usual I start with a solid back color for uh, the background. Um, this painting is, uh, is quite dark, so therefore I use a, uh, start out with a quite dark uh, color. And actually this is uh, a dark blue. And just a simple color, some Mars black and I think some ultramarine blue mixed in with one another. And it's a little bit lighter now because I uh, used a little bit of water. But uh, the less water, the thicker and the opaque the paint will be. Sometimes I use a few layers for the background and sometimes I only use one. For this painting I ended up using one. I just later on mixed in a little bit more paint and that was enough to get a nice solid background color. And now I'm starting in filling in the uh, main subject. Uh, yeah, this is uh, yeah probably the main subject is the, is the cow. The uh, thunderstorm is also very important, but uh, this is a um, this one is in front. And therefore, I like to use just a, a mid-tone gray paint so I know where the subject will go, and then I can start airbrushing. It's uh, easier for me now to know where which sh uh, should go, where the clouds should go, and the uh, the lightnings uh, from the town thunderstorm uh, is uh, it's easier for me now to judge where uh, where things should go like that. And also, I like to mention mention that uh, for this painting, I uh, used some sanded paper before I started painting on the canvas, be, uh, because I like a very very smooth uh, canvas to paint on, and it really make a lot of difference. Using that sanded paper, I smoothed out the canvas so so much more than I usually have, and uh, maybe you not noticed, uh, but in the uh, the tutorial of from uh, Terra that I did, I will have a po uh, link pop up by now, and you can check it out. But that texture of the canvas was uh, way rougher than this one, and to be honest, it it works not very nice to especially to paint in fur and when i'm using the airbrush i like it smoother because then uh, the lines will show up uh, better and i don't have that much of texture from the canvas showing through through the paint that i'm laying in and uh, like i said especially on fur i like those brush strokes to be very smooth it makes it so much easier to paint in fur with the uh, terra painting, I uh, it was quite hard to uh, to get her fur uh, look nice and smooth. With this painting, it was a lot easier. 
and you will see starting me doing that in, in a minute but now I'm using airbrush for those uh, for the lightnings and um, it, it was uh, also for that part a lot easier uh, the only thing that I had to watch here was that I didn't paint over it too soon because the uh, airbrush paint is a little bit wet and because the air is uh, pushing out quite strongly from the airbrush you may end up um, pushing the paint around on your canvas so therefore it's sometimes handy to just to wait a few seconds to let the paint dry normally it dries quite quickly so it, it, it just takes a few seconds and uh, you're good to go depending on how much paint you lay in obviously but uh, yeah, in general you don't have to wait as long with, as with the acrylic paints but also you can use a, a hair dryer to uh, speed up the process now I'm painting in that little village and that made a, a lot of difference for this painting if you ask me. It made the uh, painting feel m way more completer than only the thunderstorm and the cow. And there were a few little houses there but I painted in a, a, a yeah there was maybe one or two but in my reference but I painted in a few more to indicate a, a little village there and also those little threes on the horizon are uh, are making this part uh, this this piece this uh, art piece uh, way nice to look at if you ask me so this painting is all about uh, Tyrannus and so therefore I, uh, I made a little study, not, not especially therefore, but to paint, uh, to learn to paint the fur on this, uh, this Scottish Highlander. And that's also why the, that painting is called Terra. So it's a little uh, study before I uh, would uh, paint this uh, piece. Like I said, it was just for me to get a feel of uh, how to paint the fur. Not that I, I, I paint obviously quite a lot of different uh, furs and different fur textures, but not um, this particular one. And I think if you start out, uh, of if you want to uh, improve painting fur, this is uh, Scottish Highlands have a beautiful fur to start with because there are um, a lot of clumps of fur, short fur, longer fur. You basically have um, almost everything what you can expect uh, in uh, uh, when you're painting fur on these animals so therefore i really really enjoyed painting th these uh, these guys on oh, this guy i should say yeah uh, technically i painted too but um yeah i had really uh, much fun in painting this fur and it's smoother canvas helped me uh, help me a lot it is so nice when you're laying fur that the brush strokes are smooth and you don't see texture of the canvas fall, uh, coming through those uh, brush strokes because I personally I really hate it when that's happened, uh, happening. Um, you may like that effect and there, uh, there are artists who like that. Personally I like it as smooth as possible. So therefore uh, I, I'm going to um, use sanded paper a lot more on my canvases and the results I'm getting uh, I, I really really enjoy. And also, uh, like I said, it's so much easier to paint in the fur because you have beautiful brush strokes you can work from. And if you see on the left side, on his neck and his shoulder there, you see quite some brush strokes showing through through the black area. And that is, I did it on purpose because it's um, a very rough fur there, and um, those brush strokes help me. So therefore, I uh, let those uh, be there and uh, they will show up a little bit in the end piece but yeah i needed the texture and uh, i had it there already with uh, with uh, with those brush strokes so therefore sometimes those brush strokes can help so why not uh, leave them there of course and i'm slowly building up really watching my reference photo and uh, i'm really watching the direction of the fur uh, which direction the fur goes and how long the fur is and I'm not copying the exact amount of different clumps of fur, I'm just giving the indication. The indication is enough to let it uh, look um, photorealistic. But copying the direction is very important. And just take your time, slowly building up. And I use a lot of glazes in between um, painting the fur in. I will come back painting in fur some areas again. Because sometimes a layer is uh, was a little bit too thick, or I need a little bit more. I'm just working on the other layers now, and I'm going to darken up. And when I'm darkening up, I obviously need some highlights in the end, and I like doing that this way. I like to put on the highlights over in the end. 
I think most of the artists do that, but I'm, I'm not sure. But I think in most of them do it like this. There's always a different way, but this is uh, personally also how I like to paint. And I'm slowly, slowly building up, really taking my time there. And I use, uh, like I said, different uh, layers. And that means that I'm using all, uh, also using uh, different colors. I'm mixing in the colors while I'm going, and sometimes I use Photoshop to uh, get an indication of the colors that are in my uh, reference photo. For this one, I adjusted the colors uh, quite a bit, and uh, so yeah, basically most of the times in those cases, I just uh, mix my colors onto the palette and not checking the colors on my reference photo. But um, because I uh, just changed it and I have a general idea from the, from, uh, of the colors that I want to use. But if you have uh, some um, difficulty to paint in the colors, you may uh, want to use that color picker tool. And I ha also have a tutorial about that and how I uh, use that for mixing my colors. And it's really, really handy. It, sh it, saves me so it saved me so much time when I started out painting uh, on mixing colors and find the right colors because that, uh, that tool helps you really, really uh, to get in the right right direction. And if you have the, your, your basic colors, maybe you need five, maybe you need 10 for the painting, you can mix from those colors uh, on and on how much you want, but you have a general idea which colors you need to use for the painting. And that is makes a whole lot of difference. It makes it uh, way easier if you ask me. Here I'm painting in the, the textures of the, the uh, horns and to be honest I was uh, fighting a little bit uh, because the reference photo uh, is the lighting different than for this painting so therefore I had to, I had to come up with a, a different approach um, because the light is heading, uh, is coming from another direction in, for this painting so I came up and I need to adjust that uh, and like I said uh, from my reference photo but it wasn't that hard and it's also surrealistic so I'm probably not completely right if you uh, are watching uh, where the light is hitting the cow but that's okay with me I uh, just will give I try to be as close as I can but I never had problems um, with the painting not coming out uh, and nicely because the, the lighting was uh, a bit off and in the end it's surrealistic so uh, you're uh, kind of safe there but uh, of course I want to be as close as I can and I use that same blue color for in uh, with uh, around the uh, thunderstorm and uh, because I really like the blue and it hypes up the contrast uh, a little bit more it also uh, works very well with uh, with the brown tones and for those uh, little pieces of grass I just used my uh, use my uh, lighter brush liner brush I should say and like I said, of a, like I quite often mentioned in my tutorials, I like the liner brushes with the stiffer uh, bristles on the end. You have a little bit more control in how your brush strokes uh, go in comparison to the other liner brush with the softer uh, bristles. So therefore you may want to watch for those ones. Those are a bit easier to make those details. And it really makes a, quite, a, quite a difference for me uh, putting in those uh, little uh, sections of grass. It made it... Uh, the painting a little bit more interesting to watch. And here is my version of Tyrannus. And as always I hope you like this uh, tutorial and of course you can always leave a comment in the section uh, below this uh, video if you want to know more about the painting if you have any questions or whatsoever just leave it in the comments and I will uh, get through with that as soon as I can. Also, maybe you notice I have a little bit of different uh, setup with my camera. I hope uh, you like this. I hope I like it. I will have to see it on my computer at this day, at this moment. I have no idea, but I, I can see myself in a little screen behind the uh, the actual camera, and uh, so therefore I keep watching it, and it, I think it looks better than it uh, did before. Uh, if it doesn't, I will change it. Uh, so. Um, but yeah, I thought it would be nice to have a little bit of a different setup. I think this is uh, just nicer to watch. I can also easily show the uh, paintings and my uh, chairs on wheels so I can uh, move uh, uh, across the room if I needed to. <laughs> so therefore I can show a little bit more and I think it's a little bit fun talking to the camera this way. Uh, also you see my backdrop. I did talk about it uh, a little bit in the previous uh, tutorials. Uh, I have two other ones. I will come up with a system that it makes it a lot easier for me to change those backgrounds because it's kind of hard to get to the area where I need to be to change it. 
Uh, but that will be uh, all, I think, for next year. Talking about next year, I will have another tutorial coming up in this year. Uh, I'm working on it, it takes a little bit more of time. And if I'm correct, this is my 99th video on it, so that will be my 100th video on my YouTube channel. And I think that's uh, kind of nice. Uh, 100 videos, I, I have no idea um, how I made them, where I did find the time, but I really enjoyed making them and I hope you liked them as well. But that's a, a little fun fact and um, also in the end of the year. So we will talk about that uh, later on. Uh, like I said, I'm working on it. I can say it will be, uh, will be about the Inktex project that I'm uh, working on and it will include the tips. I, I found a, a very useful tips uh, while I was working and I thought it would be nice to share uh, them with you so you can try them out. Maybe you don't like them, maybe you like them. But uh, that will be um, hopefully upcoming this year. So for now, I would uh, like to say uh, I, I would like to say I would like to wish you a very very nice Christmas, and I will see you in between the Christmas days and the uh, the uh, New Year. But uh, yeah, I hope you have a wonderful time. Thank you for your support on my channel, and uh, as always, I hope to see you at one of my uh, tutorials. Bye bye.